Closing a home sale does not happen overnight. When you accept a buyer's offer on your home, there's still a long road ahead of you. But by the end of this video, you'll understand exactly how long the whole process takes and when you'll finally get your money. Selling your home can make you feel like a kid on a road trip. When are we going to get there already? This is one of the biggest financial transactions of your life, so you can't just snap your fingers to make things happen. Here's a breakdown of everything that goes into closing your home sale. First, you'll negotiate the buyer's offer and establish contingencies. Depending on how much you need to negotiate and how quickly your teams respond to each other, this process could take a couple of days to a couple of weeks. Then, once you have an agreement, you'll sign a purchase agreement with the buyer and open escrow. Next, it's time for you to review and clear the title on your home. If your title is clear, this is a quick process, but liens and judgments on your title could take weeks or even months to clear. If you have title issues, you may want to hire a real estate attorney to help you work them out. Pro tip, ask your real estate agent to order a preliminary title report before you put your house on the market. That way, if there are any issues that come up, you can take care of them ahead of time instead of during closing. After the title is cleared, it's time for the home inspection. The home inspection itself takes a few hours, and the report will usually come back within a week. Following the home inspection, you'll have to make any necessary repairs on the safety and function of your home, which could take some time, depending on the condition of your house. Most buyer offers are contingent on the home inspection, which means they could walk away from the home sale if something comes up that you aren't ready to deal with. For minor issues such as broken window panes or loose roof shingles, the buyer will typically ask that you repair it or provide a credit to fix the issue once they own the house. If the buyer requests repairs, you'll have to hire someone to fix the issues as soon as possible to keep the closing process on track. With all the repairs and inspection negotiations done, the buyer and their lender will bring in a home appraiser. The home appraisal can end a few different ways. The appraiser can either value your home under the buyer's offer, close to the offer, or over the offer. A home appraisal can prolong your sale if the appraiser values the home lower than the buyer's offer. Either you or the buyer will have to negotiate to make up the difference, or request a second appraisal for the deal to move forward. Those negotiations could add a few hours or a few weeks to the closing process. It all depends on if and when you and the buyer are able to come to an agreement. Then, once you've come to the final sale price of your home, there will be a final walkthrough of the property. If everything goes smoothly, you could close on your home sale in about four weeks. But 25% of closings get delayed before eventually settling. The number one biggest delay in closing is financing issues for the buyer. According to Deborah Smith, a top real estate agent in Detroit, there's not much a seller can do to hurry the financing process along. It's really up to the buyer and the lender. If the buyer commits to timely responses to a lender's request, that loan can close fairly quickly. If a buyer is not, uh, not very quick in responding to lender requests, or sometimes the documentation that they need to provide is not readily available, those are the biggest delays. Once you get past any possible closing delays, you'll be on your way to the closing table. This is the final step. It's where you'll receive payment for your sale and your closing statement. The seller's closing statement is an itemized list of fees and credits that shows your net profit and the finances of the transaction. You can expect to pay between 6 and 10% of the final sale price in commissions and closing costs. If you as the seller offer to pay any of the buyer's fees for obtaining a loan, you'll probably get a version of the closing disclosure, which outlines exactly what the lender's charges are. But back to the settlement statement. Depending on what state you're in, it'll be prepared by either an attorney, a title company, or an escrow firm, and the actual closing will be held at the offices of one of these three locations. This map shows which type of closing your state requires. Early on in your home sale, you might get a document that looks like the closing statement. That's your net sheet. The seller's net sheet isn't an official document. It's a worksheet that your agent will fill out to organize an estimate of how much you'll pocket from your home sale after expenses like taxes, your real estate agent's commission, your remaining mortgage, and escrow fees. You might even see a few of these net sheets as the amount your house sells for shifts throughout the sale. But at the closing table, your seller's closing statement should reflect the exact amount you're walking away with. To be confident that there are no errors in your home sale closing, work with an experienced real estate agent who will pay attention to every little detail. Find one at homelight.com.